While making the defense of Jim West against the rather crude and primitive television show Dr. Phil, I thought to myself that I should make a video explaining all of the elements and what their purposes are in the show, which obviously birthed the series that I am doing. However, I have since changed my stance on these videos as I feel investigating into TV shows would only get boring real fast, so instead I thought I would make this series about anything I can investigate or explain better or take apart, so without further ado, let's dissect shall we? Kicking it all off, we are going to be focusing on Dr. Phil, showing the elements and explaining the overall purpose in the show. And then we will be moving on to the now cancelled show that is considered to be the British Dr. Phil show for the wrong reasons, Jeremy Kyle. As there is one element in that show that no other would be stupid enough to even consider in the screening process. So the first element in the Dr. Phil show is a cinematic introduction sequence, or as I like to call it, where they show a bunch of clips, home recordings and interviews alike. Cut the interview clips to splice up more drama to increase viewer engagement. As I said in a previous video, drama sells probably more than sex does. The sequence's overall purpose in any instance is to hook the viewer in with the drama on screen, so they become more invested in the family's or guest's story, aka more viewers, more ratings. After the sequence is over, we get a bit of a quick summary between Phil McGraw and the guests. Personally, I don't believe he is as invested as the show claims he is. Don't let the chat after the sequence fool you. There is a reason as to why Dr. Phil holds a binder or a piece of card or a paper. Because, now, this is just a theory. A GAME THEORY! No, 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 not on this channel. This is just my opinion. But I believe that he is holding a script for the show in his hands, a basic overhaul of what the guests are dealing with as to show Dr. Phil is a very understanding guy who has a history with helping others. Maybe he does, but doesn't it seem a bit strange as to why he has a binder or a book with him while talking to the guests? Perhaps what is in it is a basic summary of what is happening in their lives for Phil to get an understanding of the situation. Now, the reason, if not clear, for the guests who are the defending party in the story, you know, not the aggressive ones, the reason that they get to sit down is because they show their side first, as once the other party gets on stage, you know they won't play nice. This is done deliberately so that there is more clarity to the defending party, and so that the show can bait the other side into giving a catch-me-outside moment as protest or you want producers, you love getting moments like that because you know it will grab people people's attention and go viral and by doing so they gain fame and fortune from it. The next element in Dr. Phil's show is the live studio audience, and their jobs are to provide a sense of emotional clarity. Like say for instance, when a heartwarming moment happens, their jobs are to go Aww. Kinda like when a girl sees a cute pet, mostly kittens or puppies, but the main reason for them being there is to egg on a certain guest to get a reaction from them that will hook the viewer again, becoming even more invested within the show. Because a spicy drama filled show is more likely to grab people's attention when they slap the big reality TV show sticker on it. And I hate to say it, but it's true that other people's frustrations or rage moments is funny to most people, along with other people's blunders are inherently funny to most people. And other people's misfortunes are highly entertaining. There was a time where the live studio audience was merely there as a just cause and a part of the show to see how the show itself is made. Take for instance old TV shows like Friends or Two Pints of Lager and a Packet of Crisps. However, comedy oriented TV shows and reality TV shows are two very different things. The cutaway sequences are used to keep the viewer or audience invested or hooked into the show. It is also used as a way to relay information that Phil and the guests will be talking about in the next segment. The producers are an element of the show in their own right, and their jobs are to secure funding from a range of sponsors, managing the budget of the show, assigning resources, creating production plans, and hiring screenwriters, directors, casting directors, cinematographers, and other vital members of staff. In the case of Dr. Phil, as we have seen in the past, the producers are also responsible in getting guests with the juiciest story to add to their haul of misfortunate souls. 
the cases of this are lying to certain guests about certain resources that may be used to gain an emotional response like Bailey's mum's arrival to the show when a producer told her that she wouldn't be attending and Jim West being told that his ex-wife wouldn't be appearing so they can't show any recordings of her in the sequences or other evidence that would conflict with the narrative that they would try to paint which is Jim West is a abusive person who uses his daughter to his own advantage in life which we know is just a fabrication of the truth. Producers will also cut and splice footage together to create a bulletproof narrative to whatever situation they wish to use for their own ends. The next element I will be talking about are the releases that the producers make the guests sign before they are allowed to take part within the filming of the show. There are a lot of releases that basically cover their asses, like not being able to be violent towards members of staff, including the host, but most importantly, you can't talk about the filming of the show and prior events to filming. For example, behind the scenes and permission to air the episode that they will be starring in. This is basically in a nutshell to prevent backlash towards themselves, whether that be in the filming of the show, on social media, or other platforms, or within a lawsuit. So it doesn't matter what they do to you, you won't be able to do anything unless you want the producer's lawyers or solicitors to sue you for breaching the release or show contract. So effectively, when signing that release, you are selling your soul to the devil. The person the show revolves around is an element within itself. Producers will take out any little hiccup in editing the episode. Anything that makes the host look bad or dumb will be deleted to preserve that malevolent god complex that the show seems to have, as that is how it is presented to be. So it's no wonder that people who support these host TV stars would have the impression that they can do no wrong. Let's move on to the last part of this dissection and that's what eventually killed Jeremy Kyle. The, the show, not the person. See, Jeremy Kyle is a ruder version of Dr. Phil. Jeremy basically takes what he gets from rude and nasty guests and throws it back in their face, especially if they get a bit rowdy. However, the element of the show that destroyed the lives of so many people eventually imploded in on itself, taking the show down with it. See, Jeremy's producers thought that it would be a good idea to use a lie detector test to see who was telling the truth, then demonize who is in fact lying or praise if they were telling the truth. What the producers failed to realize is that the lie detector isn't 100% accurate. There are a lot of different variables that can play on the detector, whether that person has a weak heart, high blood pressure, a pacemaker, and so many other conditions that can play out or even help the results, which is why lie detectors are rarely even used anymore, as several reviews did show that these devices are only 70% accurate at best and the percentage can vary between different experts. So for Jeremy Kyle, I only have one thing to say to you. If you're going to base your entire case around one variable, then do yourself a favor and just don't, as that is a recipe for disaster. See, if Dr. Phil's show is a circus, then Jeremy Kyle's show is Russian roulette. See, at least after appearing on Dr. Phil, you can still pick up where you left off. But with Jeremy Kyle, if it gets quote unquote prove that you lied, then you are thereby untrustworthy to everybody. Good luck finding employment after that, or what's worse, the show could have a pedophile on the show and it gets proven that he isn't one, only to find out they got it wrong and same for the other way around. The person would wind up in prison. At least Dr. Phil's team actually haven't blundered in that direction, but use more manipulative tactics to make the big bucks. I guess common sense just isn't for everybody, or at least when money and rage ratings are involved. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed or agreed with what has been presented to you, then please give the video a like rating and write me something to read later on in the comments section and I look forward to hearing from you. And if you're new here, then why not sign up to join the British Alliance today by subscribing and ringing the notification bell for future updates. And I'll see all of you on the front lines and have a good one.